Coach Loxley released some very important information after the scrimmage. You are a Locked On Turf, your daily podcast on the Maryland Turf. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making us part of your day. So Coach Loxley released some very information about the state of the secondary, starting with the cornerback battle. As you all know, we lost Deontay Banks last year to the NFL Draft. And of course, Jacorian Bennett, which you can't forget about either. Banks was a first-round pick to the Giants. And Deontay... Um, and Jacorian Bennett was a fourth-round pick to the Raiders. Two stars from the Maryland team last year who absolutely were two of the most important players on the whole team. Great leaders, and they were a big reason the Maryland defense improved last year in many statistical categories and really anchored the defense. So the, one of the biggest question marks coming into this season was who was going to re- place those two guys if we wanted to still have one of the best secondaries in the Big Ten. And Loxley went into the transfer portal, of course, and got Jaquan Shepard, one of the best cornerbacks in the country and will be an NFL player. And He was an all-conference type of player with Cincinnati and has a chance to be an all-Big Ten player. So I'm not worried about Jaquan Shepard. I know what he can do. I know what value he brings to the program, and he's the perfect fit for um, a new number one cornerback. But where the real question lied was who was going to be the number two cornerback? We knew Tarheeb still had been the slot cornerback for a while now. So naturally, I expected Tarheeb to actually start in the slot and continuously play there. But apparently that is not true. Coach Loxley during media availability said he's played both here. He's played the slot corner position, the nickel spot for us over the last three years. He's played outside at the corner position, you know. In the perfect world, because he's been a guy that with the three corner rotation we've used, he's typically been in the slot. I think you'll see him outside a little more as we try to figure out the best slot corner for us, whether it's a nickel safety or a corner. I still envision him taking some reps inside in the slot corner position, but you know he's primarily in in an effort to develop some of these younger players. He's primarily played outside in camp. So what do I take away from that? I'll tell you, Tarheep is clearly going to be the starting outside corner. I don't want to say clearly, but what I'm thinking is that quote kind of exemplified that because if we think about it, I feel like he would have been more up in the air if Tarheeb wasn't going to play him outside or wasn't going to play, was going to play the nickel this year. But it sounds like in camp that he's played outside the whole time. So I'm guessing that's their plan. Obviously, he's used to playing the slot so they could easily move him in, like what Coach Loxley said. But I think Tarheeb is going to actually play the outside this year. That does bring up a little bit of question mark because. If we think about it, Tarheeb hasn't played a ton on the outside. I mean, he's played a little bit at times. Last year, um, got some time outside, and he's played well. But I do think he can play the outside spot really well. I have total confidence as him as a player in playing the outside, and I think he'll do that really well. And now I have a, I feel a lot better about the two cornerbacks in Tarheeb and um. Jaquan Shepard, of course, because I wasn't sure if a guy like um, Corey Coley was going to start. That's what I was kind of thinking. I thought Corey Coley was going to be the outside corner while while um, Jaquan Shepard was the other outside corner and Tarheeb was the slot. But it looks like they're not as confident in um, Corey Coley as we may have thought because Corey Coley did play a ton down the stretch. He had some definitely shaky moments, but he did play. I mean, he's a junior now, so I would thought he was going to start out there, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. So now the real question mark lies, who is going to be the slot corner? That's one of the biggest question marks on the defense. Um, This is what um, Coach Loxley had to say about that. All those guys are up for grabs, but guys like Glenn Miller have played the um, spot, but I see a guy like him playing a role there. Gavin Gibson has played... Um, a nickel position for us years ago, a year ago, and he's coming off an off-season surgery. Surgery. We have a few bodies that have the ability to play in there as well. 
as some of these young corners. And Perry Fisher, another young corner that's played a little bit inside. So what do I take away from that? That was a response in someone asking about um, Avante, who, don't forget, he's a transfer from Miami. He was a super highly um, recruited player out of high school, was a five-star, I think, or highly recruited four-star, a guy, number one safety in his class. So my early thought is that Avante could definitely take that slot role and play there. Um, I don't know how well he covers. I haven't seen a ton of him play. He hasn't played a ton at Miami. He's gotten some time, but I'm unsure of how good he is right now. But if he can cover, I would not be surprised to see him in there as um, an opportunity to get him onto the field because obviously he's a really talented player. He just hasn't lived up to that. But I also wouldn't be surprised to see um, Gavin. Gavin was only a sophomore la or a freshman last year, sophomore this year. But he showed a lot of ability last year. Um, he didn't play a ton or anything, but there were some spots where he got in in the slot and actually performed really well. So I think he can make another year's jump and be the slot starter next year or this year. Um, but replacing Tarheeb is definitely going to be a question mark on this team. But Coach Loxley also did say something interesting that the slot cornerback could potentially change week to week. It doesn't have to be necessarily um, the cornerback has to be a real corner and a guy that always plays a corner. It could also be a safety, he said, because when a team that is more heavy run and they're not concerned as much about the pass, a safety could slide in there like Avante. But if they want a pure corner and a team that passes the ball a lot and a guy that can really cover out there, they could use another guy that's closer to like Miller. So I, I think it just depends on who they want to put back there. Because if I'm thinking about the Big Ten, if we're playing Ohio State and they have three, four, five, five-star wide receivers, which is just insane to think about, and Marvin Harrison and Mecca and Buka, Fleming, and they brought in two really good freshmen, and they have a bunch of other guys in there. If we're playing a team like that, Maybe we want, we want to have more of a pure cornerback in the slot. But on the flip side, if we're playing a team like, let's say, Penn State or Michigan, where obviously they can pass the ball. Michigan has some really good wide receivers. Um, Penn State also does too. But we might concern about those two running backs duos on both teams. Um, both of them have really good backs. Penn State, Singleton, and Allen. And, of course, Michigan has Edwards and Corum. Both groups have maybe the best running back um, duos in the whole college football. So if we're playing a team like Penn State or Michigan, maybe we want to play a bigger safety in there that can stop the run. I think it all depends. I think they're still figuring it out. I think Charlotte, Towson game could be figuring it out weeks um, in multiple positions, but including the cornerback room. So that's kind of how I see it shaking up. But – I'll definitely keep my out, eye out on that. But that was not the only thing that Coach Loxley told us. I will give you the rest after this ad from Nutrafol. You don't have to choose between better hair growth in your health. Nutrafol provides a whole body health approaches for men that promotes healthier hair. That promotes healthier hair. No drugs, no compromises, just better hair. Nutrafol supports healthier hair growth from within by targeting roots, causes thinning such as stress, hormones, environment, nutrition, lifestyle, and metabolism through whole body health. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code locked on college. So make sure you guys do that immediately. Maryland could have the best safety duo in all of the Big Ten. Dante Trader and Bo Braid can lead Maryland to a top defense this year. Bo has obviously gotten um, a ton of recognition. He's been an all-mentioned um, Big Ten. I think PFF had him at third team, all-Big Ten, preseason, all-Big Ten. 
There was a lot of draft buzz. I saw an Instagram account created like a mix for him. So Bo Braid has got in a lot of recognition. I do think he's one of the best safeties in all of college football and absolutely deserves that recognition. And this year can be a huge year for him. I think he can push realistically for a first team all Big Ten type of player, depending on how he plays. He's a guy I wonder. This just kind of ran through my head um, randomly, but I wonder if Coach Loxley ever thinks about moving him or even Dante into the slot, move someone else back to safety like Avante, um, especially when we need to stop the run because those two guys can really stop the run, specifically Bo. Bo can lay the wood. So I wouldn't be surprised if um, Coach Loxley ever does that. Just a kind of random thought in my head, but I don't think it's a bad idea at all of moving Bo Braid up to the slot corner and let him help stop the run because he does that really well. But obviously he can cover. Dante also has a ton of ability. Dante can cover a whole lot of ground. He's got speed. He's fast. The only thing I want to see Dante improve on is tackling this year. Um, I thought he missed a couple of tackles, um, especially game-changing type of tackles in a couple of spots. Um, drive changing tackles that could have put them the offense behind the sticks. I want to see Dante finish a couple more of those plays, but Dante did have a couple of interceptions also. So both of them are highly impact players and are experienced players. And Coach Loxley raved about those guys. Coach Loxley, after the scrimmage, said the back end being a strength for us with Bo Braided Dante and their game experience over the last couple of years with Bo and Dante. A year ago. And then you throw Heeb, who has been a starter for us from the time he stepped foot on campus. I think having that type of community um, and the communi communication, which is really important from the safety to corner, corner to safety, I think there's a huge trust factor. There's a couple of things we look at as we start playing our guys, as we talked to him about one, did they perform at a high level? And two, do we trust them? And I think all three of those guys, they're both all three guys that can play at a high performance and that we absolutely trust. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about the safety duos also. There's no reason they can't be one of the best duos in the Big Ten. They both have most, Dante started last year. They both have had a full year of starting. So I don't. And they both played well, so I don't see why they can't be one of the best. And they're leaders, and they bring awesome work ethic. They also have their own podcast. I almost forgot about that. Um, one Speed podcast, actually. So make sure you guys go check out um, Bo and Dante's podcast. I'd love to have them on sometime and have a combined um, podcast. But they talked about they only go one speed. That's only the way they know. And that shows up on the film. Those two guys run around and wreak havoc, and I think this year they can only improve, especially Bo. People are talking about him going into the draft after this year. So if he wants to be a guy that's a draft pick, Bo has to put together a really good season, which I totally expect him to do, and is the expectation for an awesome player like Bo. Um, but the safety duo is obviously complete. But one of the more bigger question marks, probably the biggest question marks that we've talked about repeatedly is the offensive line. Coach Loxley obviously came, um, obviously said after the scrimmage that they're not close to finding a unit still, um, which doesn't surprise me at all. Um, that's been kind of the theme so far in the offensive line. They're not close to finding one. All we know is Delmar, Delmar Glaze is going to start, but talked about how he has a lot of confidence in those guys, the transfers coming in, but I'm going to give it to you real. Maryland's offensive line isn't close to where it needs to be yet, and they need to start figuring it out fast if we want any chance at competing for the Big Ten, like they say. That offensive line has got to be very good. I'll leave it at that because I talked about the offensive line last episode. Make sure to go check that out if you want more about it. But the offensive line needs to improve, and they need to figure it out fast if we want any chance of getting better in the Big Ten. But another interesting part of the team is how the kick returning is actually coming along. 
So Tyrese Chambers looks to be an early candidate for kick returns this year. Um, honestly, I never seen Tyrese play before he got to Maryland. I saw some of his um, highlights of him catching the ball, but I didn't know about him as a kick returner. So that increases competition in the room because um, he also, Coach Loxley also mentioned Octavian Smith could return kicks, which in my opinion, I like Octavian Smith back there. In the wide receiver room, I think he's the fastest guy. I think he's the most explosive guy in that room in terms of speed and agility and everything coming together. He might not be the most polished guy, but the best athlete, I think, in that group is honestly Octavian Smith. That guy can move. So I would love to see Octavian Smith back there, but obviously Tyrese Chambers gives us a veteran presence back there that can return kicks. But those aren't the only two guys that they talked about. Um, Roman Hemby also could be in the mix, Coach Loxley said, for returning kicks. I think that's the type of deal where you put him back there if you need some type of jump or it's Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, and you you got to have every play on the table to win and you bring out something new and you throw Roman Hemby back there and see if he can create an explosive run. Um, it could be interesting to see Roman Hemby back there. But honestly, I doubt him being back there. I think more aligns with um, Octavian Smith or um, Tyrese Chambers. But also, Jason Jones returned um, punts last year. So, Jason Jones is going to be in the mix too. But honestly, I think Octavian Smith is the best fit out of all those guys in the room. It also gives him the chance to get on the field a lot. He's going to play this year a ton. He's going to have a couple of big plays. Watch it. I'm calling it now. There's going to be a couple of huge plays from Octavian Smith down the field on some huge passes from Talia. But in an effort to get him more on the field because the wide receiver room is loaded and make sure you keep Octavian Smith happy, I put him back there. But he also named a couple of freshmen that could give us a spark in the kicking game, which is interesting. He named um, Wesselowski and... Manning, two um, freshmen, like I just said. Wes Lossie is like a Demo, Debo Samuel, Samuel type in high school. In case you guys don't know who Debo is, of course you probably do. 49ers player. If you watch um, Wes Lossky on film, he's very similar to that. He, he played running back. He played wide receiver. This guy is an all-around talent, can move around. I think he's one of the more underrated players in our class. Um, if he doesn't get redshirted, I can see him coming in and just giving us an explosive play on like a sweep or something like that, um, a screen game. He's just a guy you want to get the ball in his hands. But like I said, he played running back. He played wide receiver. So he's just comfortable with the ball in his hands. And then Manning's a freshman wide receiver, one of the more highly recruited freshman wide receiver in our class, if not the most talented one. Um, he's a very good athlete. So both of those guys could contribute in the kicking game um, is what Coach Loxley says. So we'll see if early on against Towson and Charlotte, I keep using those games because those are going to be games where I'm thinking we can win. Our talent is saying we should win on paper. So we should be able to try some stuff out. So I wouldn't be surprised to see different combinations in those games. But what is going on with the defensive line battle? We'll talk about it after this. All right. The defensive line can be the difference in a 7-8 to eight win season to a 10-win season for Maryland. I see a lot of people talking about um, can Maryland get to 10 wins. Checked out Locked On Big Ten. Um, he actually made an episode about can Maryland get to 10 wins. And I'm here to tell you right now that the defensive line group and the offensive line group, of course, are going to be the difference in that. Can we stop the run? Can we get pass rush? Um, obviously, we brought in Jordan Phillips, which I totally expect Jordan to be. He's only going to be a redshirt freshman, but down the line, give it one, two years, I think Jordan will be an all-Big Ten player. He's going to plug up the middle for our defense. That dude has got tree trunks for legs. If you see that guy, he is built. But if you saw on Instagram, they released a video of him doing footwork with a bunch of other guys on defense, and he can move super well for his size. So Jor um, Jordan Phillips is going to be an immediate impact player, and I think could be 
the most important, one of the most important transfers we got for sure. Obviously, if not the most important transfer we got, I'm trying to think of other guys. I think obviously Jaquan Shepard playing cornerback might be considered the most important transfer, but we'll make that an episode another day. The most trans, the most important transfer. So make sure you like and subscribe so we can talk about that on another day and you don't miss it. But not only does Jordan Phillips need to step up for the defensive line, line Tommy Aki Bisote. Um, who's expected to be the starting D tackle this year also needs to step up. I think Tommy and Jordan actually, actually, um, complement each other really well. I think Aki Basote is um more of a can get to the um give us some pass rush. Excuse me on the defensive line. While Jordan, I just expect him to plug up the middle, but he did show some pass rush ability in the um spring game, so maybe he can give us both. But I think Aki Basote also rushed the passer really well in the spring game, along with guys like Quashawn Fuller and others. So I'm totally expecting Aki Basote to step up because he was a highly recruited defensive lineman. I was looking back at Maryland's past class um, because I didn't remember exactly, but Aki Basote was a four-star or a couple years ago on um, Rivals, I want to say. So he was really highly talented guy. I don't want to say it hasn't come all together yet, but he was part of the rotation last year. So I totally ex expect Aki Basote to step up this year and show people why he's a really good player. Um, But those aren't the two guys, only two guys that Coach Loxley included on his quote about the defensive line. Coach Loxley um, said that Taze obviously um, thinks that Taze, um, he's probably more of the vocal guy in the group. He's a guy that I think has really embraced the leadership role that he's taken in terms of some of the things he's doing, not just on the field with guys, but in the locker room and just really upholding the standard that we've set for him and we want to do business. So Taz Zay has a chance um, to step up in. He's a junior now, so he's going to be the leader of the group because um, this is a young defensive line group. That's why it kind of concerns me a little bit. There's not a ton of experience but it sounds like Taze has stepped up in that role. But Coach Loxley had this to say about um, Aki Basote, which I thought was really interesting. He's still a work in progress. I've seen some maturity out of him. You know he's played some meaningful snaps for us the last two years, but this year we need him to play with a great effort and tenacity throughout the course of 60 plays. I've seen him take steps from a maturity standpoint. So... Why is this kind of interesting? There's obviously something there that's a little bit off. I don't know if Akiba Sote has gotten into trouble or something like that, but he made it seem like he still wants him to progress a lot more in maturity. Obviously, he's still just a college guy. Um, but that's what Coach Loxley kind of made it seem like he wants Akiba Sote to do. But he's obviously made strides also um, this year, but we need him to be a beast if we want any chance of being a top team in the country, in the Big Ten, maybe not in the country. We might not be there as a program yet, but as a top 25 team in the country. Because most of the guys that played across the defensive line are actually gone. Um, we rotated a lot of guys, and there's still a lot of them are gone. So how strong will that rotation be this year is still a lot to be um seen to be honest um we'll see i have confidence in jordan and kibisote i think they're might be more talented than the players we had last year but can they produce and show leadership and at that level um will go a long way but that's all we have today thanks for listening like subscribe um and see you next time thank you bye